Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. I know it looks a little different having me up here rather than Amber, um, but I'll be running the webinar today. I'm super excited, um, and we're really excited that each of you have joined us today and are ready to see kind of where this webinar takes us. So let's get started. I gotta move my Zoom features around here. Okay. So um, the topic we're speaking at today is just how connected this world is and kind of um, where we're at with social media and everything else. So my name is Michaela. Very quickly, I'll introduce myself. Um, I am helping Dark Out with communication. So I work for Amber and the rest of the board to really just share their vision and their heart out with a whole new audience and really try to put everything that they're doing into a really digestible form. And so that's kind of where I got here and I'll kind of go more into my background in just a minute. But I don't know if you knew this, but we are currently in the fourth industrial revolution. When I saw this, I kind of was taken back because you learn about all these different revolutions in history or wherever. And I never even considered that we too are also in this fourth industrial revolution. So uh, perfect. I have one more person you want to Here we go. So they say there's a current statistic that says currently children in elementary schools are preparing for jobs in which 65% of those jobs don't exist. And I was kind of thinking back on that and I was like, wow, if when I was in that elementary school, I never thought I'd, I never really could have imagined the job I have now and the job I will have post-graduation of college and everything else. So I really was like, it's just crazy to think that your children or anybody else in your family could have elementary schoolers that are going to have a job that we can't even fathom right now, which is really neat. Um, some of these jobs that really make up this fourth revolution include um, 3D printing engineers, cybersecurity, um, app developers, social media consultants, which I guess if you like, could put my job in a category, that's kind of where it would be. Um, there's bloggers who video their entire lives for people to follow with particular lifestyles. So if you're curious about someone who loves to go on Jeep trails, there's people who have made it their sole job to travel across the world and go on these Jeep trails for you. And then you watch a video and then you can go repeat them or just any area of interest you can imagine. There's a probably a blogger for it, which is just really crazy. And it's just, it's so neat seeing, the shift in where our world is going. And it's neat to categorize it in these four um, pillars that you see here about the different revolutions. So as difficult as these trends and what's going on in the world can be to follow, they are really valuable. And so that's kind of one of the main points that I'm trying to show you all today. So I am not an expert in this. Oh, I don't know what happened in my last. Oh, perfect. Um, so the topics that we're going to go over today, we just talked about like industrial revolution. Next, I want to quickly kind of go through how in the world I got to this position that I'm in. Um, I'm going to go through a quick overview of all the platforms, why this matters, um, what's Darka's approach been, how could you get started if you're interested in any of this, and then some helpful resources that I found navigating this new job I'm in and everything else. So. Um, I do not know all about the vastness of this digital world. I just kind of have been through the school of hard knocks, I guess you could say, and just kind of jumped right into it. So I started on social media media in middle school um, as a rebellion for my parents. So my, I asked my mom, um, I was like, can I please have like a Facebook account? Because all my friends had it and they were playing these fun games together and I wanted it. She was like, no, I'm not letting my 12 year old put her whole information in life out there. Well, I didn't really listen and I got a social media account behind her back. So I guess that you could say my starting point was a little bit of middle school rebellion. And then moving forward, um, I kind of in high school, I realized the impact that social media was having on my friends and some of the both the good and the bad that came from it and it kind of scared me away from it a few times um 
just having your information and everything out there is it can be very dangerous and it can also lead to a lot of trouble depending on what you're putting out there and so in high school I started hearing that you know colleges aren't going to accept you if you have certain things on your social media or anything like that and I just stopped kind of going on it because I was like I was very conscious of my reputation I did not want to get in trouble or post something that was controversial or anything so I just stopped using the tool as like I just kind of would go on it but or post like family updates but that was it so then um flash forward to I graduated I went to college I started at CSU in engineering and ag so I was trying to combine the two um I really started like getting into hard science and it was hard because I'm such a like a social person I really see the value in education and public outreach and when you're in a hard science that's not always represented. And so I felt like a lot of the time I was that voice of like, why aren't we reaching out to people and doing this? And so that was like a, something I started learning. And then between my first and second year of college, I took a year off to serve um, the Colorado FSA Association um, as the state vice president. And I represented 7,000 um, high school agricultural education students. And in this role, I realized the importance of social media more than I ever did before. So we would go to into these schools and I'd have all these kids be like, what's your Instagram or what's your Snapchat? And I was like, I don't want to give you all my information. Like it just, it felt very invasive. I was like, that's really like personal. And then as I started looking at it, I was like, you know, in our, in this new industrial revolution, that bridge between your personal and professional life, it gets closer and closer. I think sometimes because of this digital communication. And so I had a choice to make, and we had many trainings mm -hmm. on um, digital communication and social media and how to interact with students and how to um, interact with the stakeholders as well as students to really just be that voice and have a public type page. And so I just kind of bit the bullet and I did it. And I am so thankful to have really started learning about social media, learning about digital communication, because I was able to reach way more students than I would have if I just met them in a classroom once, had a good talk with them, gave them like a workshop and left and never communicated with me. And I was able to continue that relationship and continue following up. And now a lot of those students are starting to go to college and they're starting to like, just like have that interaction with me. And it's just, it's such a valuable tool. And I'm so thankful I did it for that. Um, another lens I kind of look through social media is I started a small business during my like third to second year of college, I really did not want to work waitressing hours and I loved to paint and restore furniture. So I was like, okay, how can I, how can I like advertise this or get it out there? And so I started learning like a lens of social media and digital communication through a small business. Um, and overall back being back in school and being in these new positions, I found myself in with Amber and Darka, I really, that there is a big need to curate our own story within science and agriculture. And that's kind of what my big passion has been in the last few years is how can we get this super technical, super important science to the public in a way that they care and understand? How can we really engage with audiences? And so that there isn't all this false news about science or there isn't these big scares that aren't even true. How can we really be that voice and why should we make the time to be that voice? And so that's kind of the lens I look at social media. So like I said, I'm definitely not an expert, but I've been kind of learning the hard way. And I mean, the really neat part is being in our generation and even younger, I have two younger siblings and we're all, um, we're perfectly four years apart. So my I'm the oldest. I have a brother who's four years younger than a sister who's eight years younger than me. And seeing the trend from my sister who is eight years younger to my brother who's four years younger than me, the amount of like digital media and communications that these students are going through is way, I feel like probably many of you do where you're like, I don't know any of what you're doing. So the revolution is here and it's happening and it's really important for everybody to just at least know about it. So let's see. I'll go kind of, next I kind of want to go through 
the main platforms. And while I do this, I am also going to be sending you all, I could put it in the chat right now, actually. Um, let me see that real fast. So I'm, I just made an infographic because as I've been talking to a lot of the people on the DARPA board and just um, everybody, I will say things like a social media post or a tweet or like a story. And I have people go, Michaela, what's a tweet or what's these things? So I just figured I'd do a general overview of the main four platforms we're using for DARPA and just like the main platforms people are using everywhere. So let me upload this before I forget. So this is um, the document I'm uploading is basically just the infographic of kind of like what I'll be discussing in this, but this will be fun. So um, when I think of, let's start with Facebook. So when I think of Facebook, this is one of the like original big platforms for my time. Uh, I know there was like MySpace before, but this is really Facebook. So Facebook has become this I don't even know. It's like this space to where it's your personal life and your professional life kind of coming together. Um, so for like a personal page, we'll start there. Um, my rule of thumb is I only like to add people that I know-ish. I will add people that I've met once just because I had so many of those students that um, tried to connect with me and I didn't want to miss anybody out. I'll also add like people I work with, um, just Honestly, I love it because I love building connections with people and getting to see people's families or like what they're up to is just, it's so cool. Or like getting to hear, like see what people do. You can have that conversation with them and just open it up. So Facebook on a personal note is really, really important um, to just like, I don't know, curate your own, your own brand, your own persona that you are. Um, in a way that's able to connect. Facebook is, um, for businesses, is extremely valuable because it's almost a more digestible form of your website. That's kind of how I look at it. So on Facebook, you can sell things, you can um, create an event, you can create announcements, um, and it's just all in one place, which for, for younger generations and People who are just on the go and they're just scrolling through their phone, if they can see, hey, there's a sale going on for this brand, or hey, Darka has this really cool webinar, you should jump on it. It's, it's a lot better than scrolling through a thousand emails for some people. Or if you don't always check the website, this is a great like central hub, I guess. Um, so some of the useful features I found in Facebook include Facebook Marketplace, which is almost like the new Craigslist on a Facebook platform. Um, another one is your event registration. You can also have private groups. And so this can be groups. So for example, Darko, we are just started, when we started all of our social media, we created a group and it doesn't have very many people in yet because we're still working to connect with all the members, but we've created a group for members. So this is a space to where you guys can share your updates on your professional lives. You can share updates on anything you would like to, anything that might be in the conference form. Um, one thing that Kirk brought up a few weeks ago is that DARPA has a very unique culture and it's unlike any other experience. And they always say it's like a family. And that family dynamic is something that can be taken, especially in a time like right now, taken from just a conference outlet to now on a Facebook page, you can have that same type of interaction. So there's a lot of useful features. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you guys about Facebook? I think that's the main Facebook. Um, some jargon that goes with Facebook, this might be important for some of you, is there's this, the, way, the main way you interact is through posting. So you can post pictures, videos, you can post how you feel, you can post, it's always the funny example of post everything you eat. Um, you can share things that other people post, you can um, react, you can heart something, you can like something, you can dislike something, you can like give like a throw up face at something, you can really just react however you'd like on Facebook. Um, yeah, I think that's the main Facebook. So let's go through Instagram. So Instagram is what I like to call, it's basically an art gallery. And Instagram's main features are photos. 
So you curate all these beautiful pictures and put it all together to really exemplify what you do. And a lot of times I hear things, especially in science, of people being like, well, who wants to see like, like my cows, like manure or something, or who wants to see this soil or this plant or something? And I'm telling you, people do want to see it. So the neat part about Instagram is it creates this space to where you are showing somebody what you do. And it's kind of like a visual representation. And that visual representation is so neat because like they say, a picture says a thousand words. Um, for a personal page, um, your Instagram page can be as open or as closed as you'd like it. So um, you can set your page to private and just interact with whoever you want. And it's a lot more, I'd say navigable than Facebook is sometimes just because you get to see what you want to see and you can really easily block out what you don't. So um, and that's a really neat feature. Um, for a business, like I said, it's almost your gallery. So for Darka, what we've really been focusing on is how do we, our biggest things for Darka, and I'll get into this a little bit, is um, in a little bit too, but it's information exchange, networking, and advocacy. So how can we highlight our members? How can we highlight our sponsors? How can we show people what's going on and what the water world, all in one place? So this is, that's our gallery. And the neat part is your gallery and your art form is however you want. So there's pages for people, if you're a car person, like I'll go back to the Jeep example. And I'm only using this example because my boyfriend is obsessed with Jeeps. And so I constantly am getting little, oh, you can also message other people's pictures to other people. So it just kind of shares like a really cool picture. So um, if my boyfriend is like, look at this Jeep interior or look at this Jeep lift or look at this Jeep trail, he'll send me all these different Jeep things. And so that's for what he loves. So my page is filled with like my friends' information, Darka's information, ag, all kinds of different things. So it's really a personalized to you and what you really want to see, which is a really cool feature. Um, some of the words that go with Instagram is um, posting, stories, likes, comments, shares, your feed. A big thing on Instagram is hashtags. So one thing that you can do on Instagram is you can post your picture and then under where, underneath you can put a hashtag. And if someone finds that hashtag, which you can follow a hashtag. So um, Darka, we follow the hashtag water. And so we see all the main posts that Instagram thinks we'd want to see that are titled water. So it's really neat. Um, so there's hashtags. And yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about Instagram. So LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is right here. LinkedIn is like your living resume. This is the place where all of your work experience, all of your um, network, all of your um, interests kind of come together, your professional interests all come together. So LinkedIn um, for a personal page is what our generation, so when we work on resumes or have resume workshops, we're also working on LinkedIn alongside our resume. And a lot of times they say, so you know how you can have like your super long resume with every work experience you ever have, and then you pull out the important um, pieces for, you pull out, pull out the important like jobs for different jobs. So LinkedIn, living resume for your entire, I guess like career, I don't know. I don't have a full on career yet, so I don't know exactly how it's gonna play out long term, but the neat part is, so you put in your job description and you can, if your business that you work for has, if they have a um, LinkedIn, you can tag their business and it's almost like a feature on your thing. So if you have worked for, let's say, Darka, you can now tag Darka and it'll say, I'm going to use Kirk for example, Kirk works at Darka and, or he's on the Darka board or this is his like board and it's an experience he's had. And so it's really a valuable tool for your professional life because now Kirk can also see if Kevin also is on the DARPA and he has it listed on his LinkedIn. Kirk and Kevin can see like, oh, hey, Kirk used to work for DARPA. Not that they wouldn't know each other, but then you can connect with that network person. So anybody you meet at a business place. Um, one thing I always do is if I get um, like a recruiter or um, someone that I met in the professional world, 
every time I get their business card, if I want to stay in touch with them, I'll follow them on LinkedIn and I'll connect with them on LinkedIn. And then I'll sometimes send them an email or honestly, LinkedIn kind of holds, it's like a business card holder too. So it's a really neat um, outlet for professional use. For a business, um, it's a way to, it's a really a big tool for your um, current and future employees. So on LinkedIn, you can also um, run job searches. You can, that searches that if you are looking for someone with a set skills, you can search up those skills or have that be in the criteria. And if that's not in their LinkedIn profile, they don't get to apply. So it's a real, honestly, LinkedIn, I think is going to be very prevalent in my future career as I begin looking for um, a job. And in your current, it can also, whether you're a supervisor or um, just some, an employee, it's just really valuable if you want to also stay in the loop of what your people are not your network's doing. Um, maybe someone has a really similar job title to you in another company, and maybe you're stuck on a project and they could actually have a solution for you and you guys could collaborate cross organizations. So LinkedIn is such a valuable tool for your professional world. Um, some of the jargon associated with LinkedIn is resume, connections, network, job hunt, um, information exchange. It's like your live personal portfolio. Um, I think that's most of LinkedIn. So we'll go to Twitter. So Twitter, I am probably the least familiar with. Um, I never really got a Twitter until honestly, probably a few years ago. Um, so Twitter is valuable for quick, um, live, up-to-date responses. So um, it's almost like the news, except for there's no middleman. So a person or an organization can directly go out to the public. And um, that can be a very, very valuable tool and also a really detrimental tool, as we've seen um, in political campaigns and everything else. So Twitter can be um, very, very valuable for a business who needs to stay live and up to date. So for example, if DARCA has a conference, um, in the future, what we'll probably do is, hey, this session starts right now, and so then everyone can gather again. Or um, if you have any additional information, you can just spit it out. And it's just honestly a great platform because it's short, sweet, and to the point. Um, so yeah, for a personal page, um, yeah, it just helps break that middleman. You don't have to watch the news, which is kind of what my generation does, for better or for worse. Um, let's see. Uh, the Twitter, the big words that are around Twitter are tweets, retweets, replies, threads, and your profile, followers, following. Um, those are the big ones. Um, one important note to make is that Facebook and Instagram are actually kind of connected. So if you put like a post on um, Instagram, you can actually select a feature that ties it to your Facebook and double shares. So um, I'll get into this later, but if you're looking to get started in social media, that is really the first place I would start just because they're connected and you can kind of double dip. So when I was in high school and I was just basically posting updates to keep like my long distance family or friends informed, I would usually make the post on Instagram, share to Facebook and never even look at Facebook. Um, now that I'm using it for more of like a professional sense and really trying to um, build my own brand, I definitely post on both just because Instagram, you have to have a picture to post or you can't post. And Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, you can all just, you can just post words, you can post a quote, you can post like, um, I don't know, all kinds of things. So that was a long overview, but if you have any questions, there is that infograph I put in my chat there. So why does this even matter? You're probably like, okay, who cares? So uh, the crazy part is that these, um, there's a really interesting document on Netflix that'll probably make you not want to get a social media account, but social media fills in to all of our psychology. So people are genuinely curious. Um, they're genuinely like looking for engagement with others. And um, this kind of goes to the next point, but we're kind of in a grand paradox right now. So we are more connected than ever before because of all of these platforms and this digital communication, but we're also more disconnected than we've ever been because of the current epidemic and um reason maybe it's um sorry can you all hear me okay okay 
how they kick in. Um, so we're, it's a grand paradox because we are like more connected than ever, but also more disconnected than we've ever really been before too. So social media and digital communication is that gap in between the two. Um, the main, another reason why this is important is social media can really work with you and all of your communication goals. So one thing that is really hard is the stigma around social media can be really bad. It can be just another distraction, another thing taking your attention, and that's not what you want. But if you are intentional and you make a plan and you use your authenticity, social media really can work for you. And my last point I always like to make about why social media is important is we all have a story and sometimes we can learn best from hearing others' stories. And so that story sharing piece in your testimony is so valuable. And so um, having a space to share your brand and represent who you are can be a really valuable tool. And you might just be the person that somebody really needs on a dark day when they're just scrolling on their phone. So that's kind of the why. So now I'm going to quickly go through um, Darka's like latest social media and how we've kind of managed a lot of what we're doing. So how Darker runs it is we set an intention. So like I said earlier, our three focuses are networking, information exchange, and advocacy. So up here you can't see it, but this is Amber and I's like living, working document. So every month we make a new page and we think of some brainstorms. And a lot of times we have so many ideas from the month before it carries over into the new month, but we have um, content brainstorms per each area. And so those can be, for example, network. We usually, we have a list of all of our board members and our members that we'd like to feature. And so what we do is we say, okay, we featured, today we featured Don, for example. We featured Don, we featured this person, this person, this person. So now it's time to feature this person. So we can kind of run through that. For advocacy, we put in, um, so for example, one thing that we're, um, that's going on right now in the world is the um, big fires. And that's been such a devastating loss for so many. And so how can we advocate on behalf of those fires? And how can DARCA, DARCA make a comment on that? Um, and really kind of share like this perspective. So DARCA focuses on water. What water things are going on that really is a part of these fires? So how does this all kind of tie together? Um, another thing is information exchange. So being able to come together on these webinars or many other things is kind of a part of that information exchange. So we've set an intention. So that's always my first step in social media is like, why am I posting and what, what am I looking to um, share or get out of this? Or like, what's, what's the real why that I'm doing this? Um, the second point of our social media is we make a plan. So for example, this was um, our Labor Day I post. Um, and what we did was um, we make this like post content. We think about some pictures. Amber usually provides me feedback and comments on everything in the side. Um, and then we get some hashtags put together. And our next step is to post. So we have actually found some really cool posting apps that you can um, schedule your posts. So Amber and I will plan everything out for the week. I'll go in and set everything up so I'm not every day at 5 p.m. I have to remember to post. Or if I don't have service or something that doesn't always work. So um, that's kind of what we've been doing with posting. For interacting, um, one thing that we've really loved doing is tagging some of our people or commenting or liking other people. So um, social media is social. So um, as you can see, there's um, tags for all of our sponsors right here. And um, that's really cool. So uh, let's see, um, where we're headed next is um, we currently have been posting on YouTube all of these webinars. And so one thing that we were thinking that might um, help share out these webinars a little bit more is to create a podcast. Because right now, a lot of people are overwhelmed with webinars or information or just another Zoom meeting. And so if maybe we could put the, these webinars or these forums in a more accessible form, they might be easier for people to reach and actually make a difference. Um, an even bigger difference than they may be already. And so um, we are preparing to take the audio of all the current podcasts we have, and then also moving forward, maybe at, after the end of the year, um, is to create more of a podcast rather than a webinar. So those are some things that we're really working on. Um, on Facebook, 
in Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We're really trying to connect with our members. Um, we wish we would have been able to start something like this during a conference or during a face-to-face -face, um, gathering because that's when we can really put the face with the profile and interact to catch up with our members, to show our members that we're there for them. And so that's one of the things that we are really focusing on within our social media accounts as well. So my next slide here is um, just a general overview and you guys can obviously read this, but um, my first thing is just start somewhere. Um, and you know, if you don't have an account or maybe you do, um, this, that this can still be valuable for you. So if you want to impress your family this come upcoming holiday season, start a profile. And if you're like, I don't know where to start, um, I would recommend picking one or picking Facebook and Instagram because like I said, they're connected and you can double dip by posting on Instagram and sharing it to Facebook. Um, the next thing I would say is set your intention. Um, you don't want to be notified all the time. You don't want to be um, just having another thing to keep track of, but there could be a really good intention. Um, maybe you want to share your story or maybe you just want to have your own personal pro portfolio of all the things you've been up to. Um, and then you can go back on in time. Maybe it's that you want to connect to certain people in your family or in your professional world. Set your intention and know why you're posting, why you're interacting, why you're doing what you're doing, because otherwise it is just seamlessly scrolling and that's, that's not what, that's the stigma behind social media. Um, the last thing I'd say is be social. Be encouraging, uplifting in yourself, um, if asked you, or if you wanna just post all about, I see Kevin's cat. If you wanna just post your cat all the time, post that because someone will love it. And um, especially when you're scrolling, one thing I really have to do sometimes is if I see someone's post and I was like, wow, that really made my whole day and it was so encouraging. Like I get so excited they shared it, but I don't say anything, I'll just like it and keep scrolling. So one thing I've really tried to do is slow down and connect. So this is social media. So trying to just not just like, but rather, comment, message someone, and just everyone needs that social interaction right now, and a big part of the psychology behind all of this is how much, good for good or bad, how much validation, how much support, and how much encouragement can really come from these platforms when used correctly. So that's kind of my, my snippet of how to get started and my challenge to you all. Um, this is a funny thing, so, um, but a good example. So Wendy, is iconic for having the funniest responses to people on um, all social media platforms. And so this is super funny, I'll let you all read this. So um, natural burgers, pick them off the vine. It's just, they're just so witty and so funny. And I don't have that kind of humor, but if you do, you can react, interact like this. And the main reason I wanted to share this with you is as it may be silly, funny, and witty, if you Google Wendy's social media interactions, you can find thousands and thousands and thousands of interactions that they've had. And that as a business only makes them more famous. And it also is creating an authentic response and stewarding their own story. So for example, if you, let's talk about agriculture for a second. If there's a nasty comment about ag somewhere and you could shoot off a reply like, I mean, you, you have to be nice and you have to be like, professional but if you could steward your own story and reply with something like this you like we would be the ones in charge of our own story and I think um, that's one of the biggest points I've seen in in college and just kind of navigating this professional world for the first time is there's a big disconnect between what people what the industry is and what they want to be and what other people are saying and unfortunately this digital world is kind of the bridge between those two sides so this can be such a valuable tool. And I think um, that's about all I have. So yeah, tell your story and interact with others and let me know if you need anything. But first thing, I'll open it up to questions. If you have a question, you can also chat me a question or you can have a discussion about social media, whatever you need. It's throwing a lot of things at, at me that on something that I haven't spent a lot of time with. So it's more just not knowing what even questions to ask at this point in time. 
what was that? Sorry, I missed that first part, Kevin. You don't know what questions to ask because it was too overwhelming. Is that what you said? Well, I'm saying it, you know, this is, I have not spent a lot of time on social media. So this is all kind of fresh and new stuff. So I don't even know really the questions to ask. <laughs> That's fair. What social media accounts do you have, Kevin? I don't. None? <laughs> Are you going to take the challenge and add a Facebook and an Instagram? Well, if you look really hard, you might be able to find me on Facebook. Oh, hmm. I, I, I might have to accept that challenge. Michaela, this is Kirk Russell. I, I, I was hoping I was lightning years ahead of Kevin, but he did mention he had Facebook. I do have a Facebook and I do use it to um, just stay up with uh, friends and family that what you know what's going on in their lives feels a little bit stalkerish, I will admit. Um, I'm not a I don't post I don't uh, I don't get involved in the utilization of it. Um, mm -hmm. But being a uh, follower of Darka, I give you so many kudos because it is great stuff that you post on there and I, I think it's valuable to us and having you involved in DARKA has been uh, a, really a breath of fresh air and youth um, coming in and, and helping guide us through this. Um, as, as I'm listening to your presentation and it, it still seems so overwhelming thinking of all these different platforms and already feeling like I don't have enough time to do what I do and to, to add another Instagram or tweet and stuff like that um, just seems overwhelming. And, and I think in terms of our DARCA members and uh, there, there's so many things that I think they can take advantage of and it's on us as uh, the board of DARCA to find out ways to maybe spoon feed that to them maybe having some of some of the experiences and maybe some of the trials and tribulations identified of some of our existing members, because um, it is the way of the future and, and information is gonna be readily available to those that maybe don't even know how to access it or, or maximize its value. Um, I mean, you can get lost in the weeds real quick. Um, so it's really finding the product or platform as you've presented here that best fits their needs and uh, doesn't get overwhelming, I guess, for, uh, for folks on either ditch boards or member of ditches and, and what information is valuable to them and how to get it quick. And maybe some of them, maybe a lot of them are already doing it and they don't need our assistance, but mm -hmm. I, I tend to believe that, you know, they're still dealing with some old school communications paper, uh, phone calls and things where we can help help them simplify their lives. So thank you for for advancing this idea. Oh yeah, totally. Um, one thing I will say too is um, just simply like one thing I I struggle with is after my um, honestly in the past few probably like the last like six months or something. I like I said I was in that public role with, um, I felt like a lot of pressure to represent those students and really um, post content that was really meaningful for those students. And um, I'm with you, Kirk. I kind of, in the last few months, it's like I kind of just feel like a stalker because I haven't posted really anything. I just like and comment on people's stuff. Um, so I'd say baby steps. So one thing I challenge myself to do is, okay, do like a post a month for a while. And slowly kind of work yourself into making it feel more normal to post. But I understand the feeling of a stalker and it feels weird. So maybe just comment or like, or just message someone and say, Hey, I'm thinking about you. If you don't want to feel like a complete stalker. And then Joan and Jenny, I don't think I've ever met you two. So my name is Michaela, by the way. This is Joan. Uh, no, I have not met you yet in person, but uh, I'm an avid user of social media. I got Facebook, Instagram, Yay. Twitter. <laughs> Um, and each has its own function. Um, I keep totally. in touch with family and friends on Facebook. Um, Twitter, I mostly use for political news. Mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn is obviously to support my career. And Instagram, only under duress because my granddaughter got an account and it's the only way to keep up with her. So Yay. Um, also, I was going to put out there, anybody who's like, a little nervous about this. I saw, was it called, on Netflix, Social Dilemma? On, yes, that's what I watched. 
it was an awesome movie and it makes you aware of some of the quote traps that could be out here on social media. And if you're aware, you're not going to fall into it. No. Um, and so you just got to be, don't be a doom scroller. Um, go out there with purpose. Yes. Joan, do you think I like, I was, I was wondering, I was like, I've never met Joan or Jenny. I kind of know Kevin and Kirk. So I was like, I think this will be valuable for them. But I was kind of worried. I was like, I wonder if these two actually use a lot of these platforms and if I'm just kind of reiterating what they already know. So did you find like, would you like characterize those platforms the way I did too? Or what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. And choose your platforms carefully and um, don't overdo it. There's no reason to, because you can use one platform for everything, but yeah. I like to keep things in drawers and not cross my streams. Me too. Me too. And sometimes it's hard. Have you noticed that um, sometimes there is a blur between, okay, I want to keep this professional versus now everyone from work is adding me on Facebook or have you noticed that at all? Yes. And I, I only friend somebody on Facebook after we are no longer workmates. When oh. we've gone our own separate ways, then I'm more than willing to, to friend them on Facebook. That's a, that's a good rule of thumb. I wish, honestly, I'm super thankful I'm learning what I'm learning now to help give advice to anyone else who's coming because there's definitely some times when I have students that were these innocent, like, like freshmen and then they grow up a little bit and I watch them partying in college and I'm like all right I do not want you on my Facebook anymore <laughs> right but perfect well I don't have much else unless you guys have any questions for me um Jenny and Joan thank you for joining us and um it's a pleasure to virtually meet you <laughs> same here thank you no problem Thanks for the hash the class, Kirk. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and end this if no one has questions. And thank you again and stay tuned. We only have a few more left um, of the webinars until the end of the year. Bye.